Alright, that is my main man, Unk, getting us ready for our two-step equations with his song, Two-Step, written specifically for this math concept. So we are going to be looking at two-step equations. Here we go. For this lesson, we got some um, multiple recurring ideas, things we've talked about in the past that are coming up again, and we need to be considering as we move into two-step equations. One thing that we're looking for is we're still going to be isolating. We're still going to be using that golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of your equation, you must do the exact same thing to the other side. And finally, we're using our OUIs, our OOIs, opposite operations help us isolate. So we're going to use all three of these things um, to kind of get us going through these two-step equations. Jot these three things down so that you remember what we need to do, and we can keep moving forward. Here we go. First, we got an example here. We got 2x plus 6 equals 14. This is a two-step equation. I'll show you um, in a little bit what two-step really means in terms of an equation. So in this part, you're just going to listen to what we have. Um, but we're, this is read as 2 times x plus 6 equals 14. So I just wrote out how we'd read that problem. Um, you could say 2x, but we know 2x means 2 times x plus 6 equals 14. To solve these two sub equations, we're going to use that idea above from UI, that opposites to solve for x. We use opposite equations. So if I was solving for this, I would say 14 minus 6, opposite of plus 6, minus 6, divided by 2, the opposite of times by 2, equals x. So I'm using my opposites to help me solve. 14 minus 6 divided by 2 would equal that x. So I took my um, what I read it as, and I used my opposites to kind of start to eliminate. We'll talk about exactly what this means, but I just want to show a quick example as to what that was um, talking about. Here's, a, here's how we're going to show what a one-step equation is, which what you did in the past, versus two-step equations, which we're moving forward towards now. One-step equations still use the exact same principles. Got to use UI to help us isolate for x. Here, the, the only thing I'm doing here, I only need one step to isolate for x. It says 8 times x, therefore I'm going to divide by 8. Dividing be the opposite operation of multiplying, so 8 times x, the opposite is dividing. Divide by 8 to get what x equals. So now I do, and my golden rule says, do it to the exact opposite side. x equals negative 32 divided by 8, which equals negative 4. And so now x equals negative 4. I need to do just one step. I just need to divide by 8 in order to figure out what x equals. In two-step equations, we got to do two steps. We have to do two different things to isolate for x. So in this case, again, I'm going to have you jot this down, the differences between one step and two step. In the two-step equation, we got to do two things to isolate for x. First, I got to uh, isolate by getting rid of this negative 3. Then I need to get rid of that 8 in order to figure out exactly what x is. So again, I'm using my opposite operations to help me isolate. It says 8 times x plus negative 3. So in order to eliminate this negative 3, I need to do the opposite of addition. So therefore, I need to subtract negative 3. And if you ever think about what subtracting negative 3 means, that's the exact same thing as adding positive 3. So I can choose either one, because both of them will eliminate um, this negative 3. I like my addition, so I'm going to add 3 to this side as well. Now I'm left with 8x, this now equals 0, equals negative 43 plus 3 equals negative 40. That was my first step. That was step one. Now, two step, the second step, is dividing by eight. Now, I still need to divide by eight, divide by eight, in order to figure out what x equals. And so I'm dividing by eight again, because it's eight times x. We then divide by x, the opposite operation, in order to eliminate it, in order to isolate. So now this, these eights cancel out, because eight divided by eight is one. One times x is just x. And now I'm left with negative 40 divided by eight to equal negative five. So I use two different steps. One step, get rid of that negative 3. Second step, get rid of that 8 in order to help me isolate. That's the difference between a one-step and a two-step equation. So give me, um, just jot these examples down so you have a good idea as to what the difference is between a one-step and a two-step, and do include that line to help separate what those two things, act, or what the differences are. I mentioned this briefly in class, but we got to think about ourselves when we're isolating in two-step equations as these hungry lions trying to get a snack. So we have these huge pack of wildebeests, and we're looking for how we can start to get down to that one ex excellent best morsel of that R. We want to get to that R part of that wildebeest, or we want to infiltrate the pack enough so we can attack that R. We have this equation, 3R plus 7 equals 31. And so what you see these lions doing right now is they're picking off a straggling member of the herd. 
So they're going to, in order to get um, deeper into the herd, they need to start getting some, some stuff from the outside part of the herd. So we got the straggler and the seven. That's why I wrote the seven here. Because first thing we need to do is attack that straggler. We need to get rid of, eliminate that when we're solving. So if I'm solving this problem, I would just need to get rid of the seven first. We're adding seven, therefore I would need to subtract seven to eliminate it. Um, I did forget to put in our symbols up top, and so in this one, all I really need you doing is listening, because I'm not expecting that you are going to be drawing a gigantic pack of wildebeests with lions, so that's okay. We just can list listen through this. So I subtracted the seven, and now that I eliminated, oops, I now eliminated that straggling wildebeest, because now I'm left with 3r equals 31 minus 7, which equals 24. Now I can tack these, I can, now I can start to get into the herd of the wildebeest. I can start to eliminate, because we have this three that's directly connected to the herd. It's the middle of the pack. So now that I have my stragglers eliminated, now I must go into the herd to actually get my meal. So now I need to eliminate this three in order to get my meal. And so now since it's so much closer to the herd, to, to what our goal is, remember that R, it's so closely attached to that R, we think about it like the herd. And so now we've got to divide by three in order to figure out what R equals. And in this case, r is going to equal 8 because we have 3 times r equals 24. Therefore, we divide by 3, the opposite operation, to help us eliminate it. So we divide by 3, and remember, golden rule of algebra says we've got to divide both sides by 3. So now I'm dividing 24 by 3 as well. 20, or by 3 as well. 24 divided by 3 gets us that r, and that's how we solve. Um, I would, I'd like you to write these down in your notes, and so we're going to go through this equation. I just need you to write down what's inside that pink circle there. All this extra stuff, this is going to be what our explanations as to why we do them, but I want to see a full um, problem solved in your notebooks first. We're going to talk through it just real quick. We have negative 2y minus 7 equals 3. Therefore, we add 7 because we're, um, remember, this is the furthest part from our pack. This is a straggler from the herd. Therefore, we need to eliminate that first. Eliminate it by adding, doing the opposite of subtraction, adding 7. And we've got to add 7 to both sides. So now we're left with 2y, negative 2y, I'm sorry, equals 10. And now we're right into that meat part of the herd. We see that negative 2 and the y very closely related. So now we've got to eliminate that negative 2 because we've got to isolate for y. So now we have negative 2 divided by negative 2 because, again, remember, it's negative 2 times y. Therefore, to eliminate it, you use the opposite operation to help me isolate. Therefore, I divide by negative 2. Negative 2y divided by negative 2 equals 10 divided by negative 2. These two things will cancel out negative 2 and negative 2. And so now I'm left with just y equals 10 divided by negative 2, which equals negative 5. Before we move any further with our examples, we're going to take our joke break of the day. And so our joke today is, why did the tomato blush? Why on earth did the tomato blush? What made that tomato so embarrassed? Well, the tomato blushed because he saw the salad dressing. Saw the salad dressing. Therefore, he was embarrassed, had to blush. Good thing that he's already also red, so he can't see that blushing anyway. But that's why our tomato blushed, because he saw the salad dressing. So go ahead and write down salad dressing in your notes so that I can see that you are watching our video. We'll keep back up. We got one more example to go through, and then we'll call it a day. We do need a quick review before we move forward, and that's dividing fraction or dividing with fractions. So here you see three divided by one seventh. And so if I were to rewrite that, it would look like three divided by one seventh. And remember this idea about keep, switch, flip when dividing by fractions. So first I need to turn everything into fractions. So three can just be three over one, because three divided by one is three. And so now I keep the 3 over 1, I switch division to multiplication, and I flip my 1 seventh to 7 once, or firsts, I should say, once, not a great term. But remember, that is the reciprocal idea where we took 1 seventh and just flipped it, 7 over 1. Now I can just multiply straight across and get 21 over 1, or just 21 is my total. We're going to use dividing by fractions in the next example, and you're going to see some in your homework, so that's why I'm going to do a quick review. Um, make sure that everything is in a fraction form, then keep, switch, flip, and multiply, and then you're good to go. In our last example, the last thing I need you to write down in your notes for this two-step equations is um, this example of 4 plus negative, uh, I'm sorry, 4 plus 1 fifth r equals negative 1. So again, we're going to look at that uh, straggler part of the herd. We're going to get rid of that 4 first, and then we're going to tackle that 1 fifth because we want to figure out exactly what r equals. So as I'm approaching that straggler of the herd, I want to eliminate it by, it says 4 plus 1 fifth r, so therefore I'm going to subtract 4. I'm going to do the opposite operation of addition. So 
And now what I'm left with is 0 here, and so I'm left with 4 minus 4 is 0. Now I'm left with 1 fifth r equals, but now remember I have to have to subtract 4 from this side as well, because whatever you do to one side of the equation must do the exact same thing to the other. Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And so now I'm, I've got one step of my two-step equation done, and I just need to do the other step. And so now I have 1 fifth times r, therefore I'm going to divide by 1 fifth. The opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 1 fifth to eliminate. 1 fifth divided by 1 fifth is just 1, because any number divided by itself is just 1. But now what I need to do is negative 5 divided by 1 fifth. So I'm going to uh, turn negative 5 into a fraction. I'm going to do that in green here. So I have negative 5 over 1, because remember, anything over 1 is itself. Um, so I kept that first number. I'm going to switch division to multiplication. And now I'm going to flip 1 fifth to 5 firsts. Now I can just multiply straight across. Negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. 1 times 1 is 1. So my final answer, r equals negative 25. And I got there by subtracting 4 and then dividing by 1 fifth. So again, using the opposite operations, I subtracted because I saw the addition and I divided because I saw it was multiply. And so now I'm left with negative 25 equals r. Get this example jotted down and with those things, your nice night notes are done. You are finished. Just <clears throat> excuse me, just make sure you take a picture of your notes and go ahead and start working through some of the homework problems. Best of luck.